Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Facebook Live. Um, we're excited to have you today for our early learner activity. While we're waiting for everyone to join us, I'm just gonna show you our book here called Fortunately. And what we're gonna be doing today is a parachute activity. So while we are waiting for some people to join us, you might wanna think about what could you use as a parachute? And I would suggest using a toy that you already have at home and say, what can I attach a parachute to? And then what should my parachute be made out of? So I'm going to give you a hint. We have a lot of coffee filters around my house. So I am gonna have some coffee filters handy and then think about what you could use for string. As you can see from this picture, a parachute needs something big on the top and some strings to attach it. And because we just had Earth Day, you might wanna think about what can you reuse um, and recycle for this project. So be thinking about that this morning as we get started. And then we're gonna read our story first so you can see what happens to our friend Ned here in this book called Fortunately. Fortunately is written and illustrated by Remy Charlip. And you can see he's got a great picture here on the front. And this is a story that has a pattern to it. So see if you can figure out the pattern as we're reading the story. Make some predictions maybe about what's gonna happen. So we're gonna start with a picture here of some clouds, some dark storm clouds. So we might wanna think about, hmm, what's gonna happen in relation to those storm clouds? And then we have a really smiley sun. So that might give you a clue about what our pattern is gonna be. And again, our story is called Fortunately, and it's written and illustrated by the same person, Remy Charlotte. And here's another one more clue. We have our storm cloud and our sun together. Fortunately, one day, Ned got a letter that said, please come to a surprise party. Take a look at that fun thought he's having about his surprise party. But unfortunately, the party was in Florida and he was in New York. That is not good. There we have our storm cloud because this is kind of the unfortunate part of our story. But now we're getting to a fortunate part. Fortunately, a friend loaned him an airplane. Wow, that's a really nice friend. And you notice our pages are all in color. We have a fun rainbow. And fortunately, Ned knows how to fly a plane. Oh, unfortunately, the motor exploded. Wow, that is not good. Thank goodness Ned is okay up here, Sam. But wow, that is an unfortunate circumstance. Fortunately, there was a parachute in the airplane. Ooh, there's our parachute. He is indeed lucky. And we have lots, lots of color on the page to show this is the happy thing in the story. So now you're noticing there's a pattern. Hmm, what might happen next? Unfortunately, oh, there was a hole in the parachute. Oh, no. What's going to happen next? Fortunately, there was a haystack on the ground. Ooh, I don't know if you can see this. It's pretty small. There's the haystack right here. And there's Ned right up there. It's falling down from the sky. Unfortunately, there was a pitchfork in the haystack. Oh, no, that's not good. Poor Ned. Fortunately, he missed the pitchfork. Whew. Unfortunately, he missed the haystack. Oh no. Poor Ned. Good luck, bad luck in this situation. Fortunately, he landed in the water. Whew. Prediction next though. Remember, good, bad. Unfortunately, there were sharks in the water. Oh no, poor Ned. Fortunately, he could swim. There he is, way at the top, swimming away from all those sharks. Unfortunately, there were tigers on the land where he got out. Oh, oh no. Fortunately, he could run. Ooh, and there he is, running away from those tigers. Unfortunately, he ran into a deep, dark cave. 
Wow, look, there he is. There's his eyes over there. And he's just waiting for those tigers to go away. But let's make a prediction. Something good can happen next. I think so. Fortunately, he could dig. Oh, so he dug a hole all the way out up here. Unfortunately, he dug himself into a fancy ballroom. That's a surprise. A little embarrassing. He didn't expect to end up there, did he? Fortunately, there was a surprise party going on. And fortunately, the party was for him because fortunately, it was his birthday. That's a pretty good ending to the story, don't you think? So, here at the very end, you'll notice there's a little bit of a cloud here at the end because a lot of times in life, we have good things happen and bad things happen. Kind of like right now, we're all stuck at home, unfortunately, but fortunately, we can do some fun science while we're here. So, today we're gonna talk about how you can make a fun parachute just like Ned used in his story. And before we get started, I'm gonna turn my camera down so you can kind of see some of my supplies that I have ready for today. So, one of the things we have is a coffee filter, but you can use anything similar to a coffee filter, tissue paper, a napkin, whatever you can find that you think would make a good parachute. If you don't have a hole punch, you could also just use scissors to poke some holes for our string. I do happen to have some string from a kite that I had, but you could also maybe use some dental floss if you have it at home. And we need a figure to ride our parachute. And because I have boys at home that like to play with Legos, I have a lot of Legos, um, but you could use any kind of figure. This goes with my phone, whatever you'd like. Um, if you want to use a carrier for your parachute, you could use a cup. Um, sometimes little medicine cups come or a little condiment cup with your um, ketchup or mustard or things. So try to think about what could you reuse and recycle from home because remember we just celebrated Earth Day and we want to use as many things as we can without wasting materials and you could clean those off and use those for our activity today. So let's talk about some ways that we can make a parachute. Now one of the ways to make a parachute is to put two holes on each side. So all I did was poke two holes and I tied my string on them and then I just put them underneath my figure's arms. So my Lego guy, it looks a lot like Ned in our picture here, where he's just wearing the parachute. So this is uh, one way to do it. But before we see if it works, we wanna think about what would happen if we dropped a figure that didn't have a parachute. So if we just drop this guy, whoa, he just, he just kind of broke on my floor. But if we drop our parachute, we wanna see, will this slow down, right? Will this, oh, make him go a lot slower. And that's what we wanna see. Does anyone know the force on Earth that pulls things towards the ground? It's gravity, yes. So gravity is pulling everything towards the ground. But if we create a parachute, it's gonna catch some of the air underneath there and create what we call resistance or drag and make things go slower. So when we're creating our parachute, we want to think about what could we use to slow down our person or figure that we're carrying. So you don't want to do this just once. You want to play around with some variables and see, hmm, if I created a carrier for my parachute, would that work? Um, it doesn't have to be attached to your figure. Maybe your figure could ride inside the cup right there and this time I only used two strings instead of four, and I just used two holes. So I could see, does this work the same or different? I don't wanna give it all wet. Uh, another thing you could change is the shape of your parachute. I did have some felt that I was using for a project, and I wanted to see would heavy material work better than light material. So I cut a piece of it out, and this happens to be a square instead of a circle. So maybe that'll make a difference. Um, you could also try yarn. So I use yarn for this one. And this cup is plastic instead of paper. So those are all variables, different things to change in your experiment. Ideally, you'd like to change only one at a time. Uh, I just wanted to show them to you all at once. But you could try that. You could try long strings for your parachute or short strings for your parachute. 
and you can see if that makes a difference. Um, it's a lot of trial and error. That's what the science um, exploration kind of way that we teach young learners is all about. It's all about exploring and just finding out what happens when we try different things. So our point today is to try out different parachutes. You're gonna make these at home and it would be great if you could post some pictures of your parachute. That would be wonderful. And the other fun thing to do would be take these outside. Um, today in my neighborhood, they're doing yard work, so it's not a great time to go outside, but the wind might also be a factor in how your parachute flies. And if you have a second story window or a second story balcony, it's a lot more fun to throw it off a higher level. Um, inside, if you have a stairwell, you could also throw it up from that higher level. But of course, you always want to be safe and have an adult supervise if you're gonna be dropping from a higher level. So please try out this parachute activity at home and also send us your pictures or video of you trying out this parachute at home. So thank you for joining us this morning. Remember every morning at 9.30, we do a live early learner video here on Facebook and at 1 p.m. we'll have a live demo. So come back and join us then. If you wanna find some more activities, go to azscience.org where we have a lot of fun things for you to do while you're at home. And you can also visit AZ Science at Instagram where we're running our Earth Day Challenge. So please join us for all of our fun activities and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks everyone.